Hello everyone. I'm so glad that you are with us here today as we bring the episode of Story Yangu. I am extremely happy and I'm overexcited that today we have a special servant of God. A servant of God who have served for many years as a priest. He has served as a bishop for over 30 years in the Anglican Church of Kenya. His name is the Bishop Emeritus, Right Reverend Dr. Joseph Otieno Asonga. And Bishop, I'm so glad and excited to host you today. And we are so much humble that you got an opportunity to appear in this channel so that you share with us your story. We call it Story Angu. How have you been? I've been well. Thank you for finding time Thank you. Uh, that we talk together and uh, give my story. Uh, yes, that is a good idea. I've been well. Thank you, Dr. Terry. And uh, when you look at your life and you reflect on your life, I'm so much glad that I was able to get your book, mm. uh, Following Jesus and Transforming uh, Society, yeah. which is the life and ministry of mm. the Reverend, uh, the Right Reverend mm. Dr. Joseph Wasonga. Yeah. And these are very wonderful books. I've yeah. gone through it. Yeah. When did you start reflecting and when did you decide to write this book? And how long did it take? Um, as I was approaching retirement, mm. about five years to retirement, mm. I began to note down the various experiences I had had in life, mm. the high points, the low points, mm. and um, I began to capture issues I thought mm. I could leave for younger people, okay. and uh, that is when I began taking notes and uh, doing a bit of uh, uh, reflection mm -hmm. on my life and mm -hmm. my ministry and the lessons that we think other people may learn. Thank you. Yeah. I see in your book the part that you have uh, uh, mentioned so much is that this is the work of God. Yeah. It is a marvelous in our sight. Yes, it is. So the life journey yeah. is what you quote as uh, uh, a marvelous journey. Yes. Um, it comes from the point that uh, everything I've done in my life mm -hmm. was because God was in it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you read the book, you will find that um, my mother was pregnant mm -hmm. with me when my father was taken mm -hmm. by the colonial government and detained mm -hmm. for about five to six years. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was born, mm -hmm. my father was in political detention mm -hmm. without trial. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking at how my mother, only 24 years old, mm -hmm. with three children, mm -hmm. was able to bring us up, mm -hmm. I would attribute it to the glory, the of, glory God. of God. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying right from the beginning, mm -hmm. through my salvation, mm -hmm. through my call to the ministry, mm -hmm. and through the time I have uh, lived and served, mm -hmm. uh, if it were not God, mm -hmm. it would have not worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Amen, amen, amen. It would have not worked. So you give glory to God. Yes. This far he has been Ebenezer by your life. Yes. And that's why we called you because uh, this channel mostly we are reaching the young people. Yes. We are trying to reach the young people in the whole world yes. to know that life is a journey and mm -hmm. God is there with us. Yes. I like the chapter one yeah. or the part one yeah. which uh, talks about birth yeah. and early childhood yes <laughs> and you mentioned dad yeah. mom i want yeah. you just to give us your story about birth and early childhood yes um as i've already alluded to uh my mother was pregnant with me when uh, the emergency was declared in kenya mm -hmm. 
mm. that's about 1952 53 mm -hmm. and uh, my father was quite actively involved mm -hmm. in supporting the cause for independence mm. he was a trader a carpenter mm. a businessman in uh, in nakuru mm. he was also the chair of the chamber of commerce uh, in nakuru at that time okay. uh, what he was doing mostly was to raise funds to pay lawyers who are um, litigating for the mau mau fighters and those people mm. who had been arrested and in that process of uh, mobilizing and also raising funds, mm. the colonial government saw him as a threat. A threat and okay. so he was arrested because they had nothing they could charge him with. Mm -hmm. uh, they then detained him mm -hmm. uh, in uh, 1953, mm -hmm. coming to 1954. Mm -hmm. So I'm born when my father is in uh, political detention, detention yeah. without trial, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm the third born to my mother mm -hmm. uh, at that time. And so I see the struggles that my mother was going through mm -hmm. and all that, and uh, I say really it was because of God. I also think that uh, my mother was a very dedicated lady mm -hmm. uh, to the cause of the freedom fight mm -hmm. because at 24 if your husband is in such trouble mm -hmm. some ladies may give up mm -hmm. and even go away or begin cheating or do something else. Mm -hmm. uh, we thank God for our mom because she stood strong mm -hmm. uh, even in the absence of um, mm -hmm. So my mother's name is uh, Nora Alila. Mm -hmm. uh, she comes from um, a game Sirembe mm -hmm. around the Gogo primary school. Mm -hmm. Her father was actually a school teacher. Okay. In our line, my mother's family was more affluent mm -hmm. than my father's oh, family. Mm -hmm. But because of the things she learned from her father, she was able to support us mm -hmm. and even support our education, although she was alone. Mm -hmm. So my early childhood was a life lived with mama alone mm -hmm. and uh, knowing that dad is in political detention, detention. fighting for the liberation, liberation. Of, uh, of Kenya. And of course my father was this, uh, became the senator of Nakuru mm -hmm. okay. uh, in 1963. Mm -hmm. After he was released from detention, mm -hmm. uh, she, he kept on uh, mobilizing. Mm -hmm. He became chairman of Kanu in Nakuru. Mm -hmm. Eventually he was elected senator. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on, mm -hmm. uh, if you read, you will find again, mm -hmm. he was arrested and detained mm -hmm. by the Kanu government. Mm -hmm. So we, we grew up sometimes in trouble, sometimes mm -hmm. feeling things are okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why I attribute mm -hmm. uh, this whole issue to God. Amen. It's God who was with Amen. us. <laughs> when you say that you are the fa uh, your father was a uh, uh, late honorable senator, was Songa, uh, I was almost calling you dynasty. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the word dynasty is misplaced in Kenyan uh, political discourse uh, because really dynasty only happens after several generations mm -mm. of um, wealthy individual mm -hmm. uh, at our uh, in our family my father was never wealthy mm -hmm. because uh, of the early struggles he was a very good businessman he could have been mm -hmm. wealthy but all his wealth mm -hmm. went into supporting people mm -hmm. went into supporting the liberation cause mm -hmm. and uh, then when he came out as a senator mm -hmm. they were just earning very little at that time with mm -hmm. a lot of responsibilities mm -hmm. so he really never became wealthy mm -hmm. but we are happy that he was wealthy in terms of um, uh, social capital mm -hmm. uh, because even if you read my story the people who came to support us mm -hmm. were people who my father had helped 
okay. in his earlier life. Mm -hmm. So he was very rich in terms of social capital. Okay. And I think that's one thing people need to mm -hmm. work at. So mm -hmm. you have connections, mm -hmm. then you have uh, people who you have helped in your, in your life, mm -hmm. and they may come handy mm -hmm. to your children, mm -hmm. or even if not your children, your legacy will live on mm -hmm. in the society because you helped people who appreciate it. Amen. Yeah. Social capital. So the young people, yeah. you don't need to close yourself in the media yeah. and you don't have time to share with your cousins mm -hmm. and even your friends. Yeah. Uh, Bishop, when I was looking at this, I realized that you had many names. Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> I want you to mention those names so that uh, some of the viewers can realize that people can develop different names. Yeah. You know, in our culture, names are very important mm -hmm. because they also determine your uh, character traits. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first name I was given was just like all other people in our community would be given mm. uh, by the time you were born. Mm -hmm. So the first name I got was um, Otieno mm -hmm. because I was born at night. At night, okay. Uh, but also at one point some people would refer to me as Juma mm. because I was born on a Sunday, Jumapili. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. time and the day of your birth mm -hmm. was quite important for our people. Mm -hmm. Then as we continued living, I remember attending my maternal, step maternal grandfather, mm -hmm. uh, brother to my grandfather mm -hmm. who died. Mm -hmm. Then during the funeral, we were there and then we went back home. And I'm told I kept on crying and I would not be comforted with either food or mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. until my mother had to, in a dream, mm -hmm. get a name of the, the uncle who, who she had buried mm -hmm. uh, coming that I should be named after, after him. him yeah. mm -hmm. So his name was Elisha Alela. Mm -hmm. Uh, Elisha was a catechist in the Anglican church, okay. so they used to call him Japuem. Mm -hmm. So right from um, my young age, mm -hmm. my, my, my mother referred to me as her father mm -hmm. and as Japuem. Mm -hmm. And uh, by Japuem, they actually meant a catechist within uh, the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see, the name will kind of control mm -hmm. who you become even in, in, <laughs> in older, <laughs> older life. Because yeah. people will keep on saying, mm -hmm. oh, this was a good preacher, mm -hmm. was a good teacher of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And you listen to that and mm -hmm. somehow it shapes, mm -hmm. it shapes your, your, your thinking. Your thinking yeah. So in early times, I would also be referred to as uh, Elisha, mm -hmm. I would be referred to as Alila mm -hmm. because that was a name mm -hmm. I was given uh, during uh, that early time. Mm -hmm. Then word reached my father uh, while he was in detention mm -hmm. that I had been born. Mm -hmm. And at that time they were with Muse Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe they were in <laughs> Zuma, oh, yeah. Jomo. Jomo. Okay. So I got the name Jomo. <laughs> so in the village you are known as uh, Jomo Tieno or yeah. Jomo. <laughs> I, was known, I was just actually known as, as Jomo. Jomo. Okay. Most people mm. called me Wodokuyu. Wodokuyu, the son of yeah. <laughs> I know. Because, you know, Jomo was a respected freedom fighter, fighter a respected leader of the community mm. and so if you are named after him, mm. again people call you that mm. they want you to build that uh, leadership, leadership, okay. leadership mm. Trait mm. And, uh, be a person of honor mm -hmm. and uh, all that so that mm -hmm. was uh, also my name mm -hmm. for quite some time mm -hmm. even in school I used the name Jomo Wasonga mm -hmm. some people would just call me Jomo Kenyatta mm -hmm. and it, uh, it went on uh, like that there were also nicknames, uh, you know, people from Nyanza, mm. 
love praise names. Mm -hmm. uh, and your praise name will come more by what you like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, like if you like to sing, you may be given a praise name from a, a renowned singer. Mm -hmm. Like at one point, some of my friends would call me David Amunga mm -hmm. because I like to sing okay. David Amunga's songs. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was a musician. He, oh, Amunga. he was a great musician. Bang or gospel. Or <laughs> those, those ones, I don't even know what they, <laughs> they were. Oh, yeah. In those early days, mm -hmm. um, he sang a lot of popular songs mm -hmm. in the very, very early days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I, I also see you, there's a song that you write in your book here. Agwenge Osomo Ochwe Ulaya. And I see the translation Agwings <laughs> has read up to England. Yes. Yeah, so those are the songs that you are singing? Yes, uh, actually I recall that from my grandmother's funeral. Mm -hmm. uh, one of um, our relatives came to uh, the funeral with a guitarist mm -hmm. uh, who those days they were playing just one guitar mm -hmm. and they had the, these shakers they mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. and uh, that was all. Mm -hmm. And this person mm -hmm was singing that Agwingi had gone to England studying and came back mm -hmm. and that song kind of grabbed, uh, g gripped my attention mm -hmm. and I began to think oh so if you read you will be celebrated mm -hmm. and that kind of made me feel I too mm -hmm. should be able to read, read so to a point I will go overseas mm -hmm. and uh, when you come back is to the delight of everybody mm -hmm. because the thing I was saying now people are dancing mm -hmm. and singing in praise mm -hmm. of arguing Skode. Mm -hmm. It was also a way of capturing uh, the biographies of people mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. they have done mm -hmm. and that's why as we were growing up mm -hmm. listening and singing songs was a way of learning mm -hmm. and developing values mm -hmm. yes what about your education yes um my education was also checkered because of my father's checkered history. Mm -hmm. um, I started school at o Ojola Mixed Primary School mm -hmm. uh, in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. uh, not really Kisumu, but in Kisumu location. Okay. Ojola is this uh, uh, area on the road from Kisumu to Siaya. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a school there. Uh, where I was in 1962, mm -hmm. I joined Standard One. Okay. I stayed there only for one term mm -hmm. because my aunt with whom I was living was fairly poor mm -hmm. and uh, there was famine at that time. And uh, so my mother was told by friends, if you leave your son in that place, mm -hmm. he will die mm -hmm. and all that. So I was pulled from Ojola and then I came to Sawagongo Primary School then. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Sawagongo Primary School, I think, for just one year. Okay. Then I was transferred to Ronga. My father was living in a farm in Rongai, mm -hmm. being the senator for Nakuru. For Nakuru then, yeah. Yes, so mm -hmm. after that, I went to other schools, then uh, Standard 5, I went to Wagai Primary School, mm -hmm. and it is in Wagai Primary School where I sat for CPE, Standard 7, mm -hmm. then, and then I went to Sawagongo mm -hmm. High School. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it in Rongai when I was reading your book yes. talks about uh, you know some Kikuyu language? Yes, a bit and, uh, of it. You you say that at least build your way on how you view other people. Yes. Okay. That is true. Mm -hmm. I was in um, Rongai at Simberia Primary School. Mm -hmm. I think for one year. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Kinare Forest Primary School which is actually now in I believe in Nyahururu. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and uh, that is where I picked a lot of um, of Kikuyu words, okay. and I had so many Kikuyu friends. Mm -hmm. So growing up, mm 
I began to realize that uh, people are good. <laughs> you, you cannot blame, uh, mm -hmm. condemn people in blanket mm -hmm. uh, that um, uh, these people are this way or that way. Mm -hmm. Some very good values in every community. Mm -hmm. I saw that in Rongai I was more with Kalenjins, mm -hmm. but then in uh, uh, Nyahururu I was more with the Kikuyus, mm -hmm. and uh, then now in my life it has confirmed what I established as a young person mm -hmm. that there is a lot of value in every community mm -hmm. in Kenya and even beyond. Amen. Yes. And I think that's a message even to the young people yes. that um, even during this time that we are planning election, mm -hmm. I don't hate somebody because it's a Kiko, is a mm -hmm. Luo, is a mm -hmm. Kalenji. Mm -hmm. yeah? I see yeah. the government trying to mm. fight hate speech and mm. many things that yeah. it's a, it's our bishop is telling us that mm. uh, we are special. Mm. We are special. Yeah, every community has a very positive mm. culture of values mm -hmm. and uh, in Kenya if we could pick the strength of every community mm -hmm. and fuse it together, mm -hmm. <laughs> we would make a great culture because mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. of all the 43 tribes in Kenya, mm -hmm. each of them have something very, very special. And of course, being human beings, you may also have one or two mm -hmm. negative things, mm -hmm. but we don't go for negativity, we mm -hmm. go for positive, for positive values. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one thing we need to take as Kenyans. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that is the life story of a mm -hmm. bishop. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a son of a senator. Mm -hmm. But again, he went through a lot. Yeah. I don't know, maybe you are a young person and you are facing many challenges in life and you want to give up. The bishop have told us they went without food, they live with poor aunt. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he did not give up. Mm. And even as we continue, Baba Skofu, yes. you know, the young people are also much keen yeah. on your marriage issues. <laughs> uh, they are really wondering what's about your marriage and your family life. Yes. Uh, as a pastor, mm. do you show love to your wife? Ama, you are a boring husband. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, prayer and uh, Bible study are um, a very strong foundation Amen. for any family because marriage is a relationship. Um, I remember I first met uh, Mama Jennifer, now my wife, mm. at um, a Kayo conference in Butere mm. in 1974. Mm. She was in Form 1, I was in Form 2. Mm. And um, we met, uh, luckily we were in the same Bible study group. Mm. She had come from St. Stephen's Njogo Road mm. and I had come from Sawagongo Parish back mm. at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the Bible study I saw a very confident lady mm -hmm. uh, willing to share her um, her thoughts on mm. the issues that were being raised mm. and that kind of caught my attention. Mm. But at that time I was not looking for a girlfriend so mm. it just ended at seeing a very confident, mm. beautiful young girl mm. coming from St. Stephen's Cathedral mm. which for us in the rural was mm. really a big a church. Okay. Uh, but the matter ended there. Then later on uh, we were very few saved young people mm. in the rural part of Kenya mm. and uh, so whenever we had there was a saved young person we would go mm. to look for him mm. and uh, one school holiday I had there was Nabo Thodera mm. who was a student at uh, Nairobi University and had been saved so we went to visit him mm -hmm. and when I visited him, I realized this same girl was his sister. Okay. So he told me, oh, that girl you met from St. Stephen's mm -hmm. is my sister, and actually she's preparing tea which you will have today. Okay. So I met her for the second, <laughs> the second time, time now, yeah. in her home. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of salvation, we became very close to her brother and to her, mm -hmm. and uh, we would visit. Then when, at that time, she was a student at Pangani Girls here mm. in Nairobi, but because her father got transferred uh, from 
uh, the airport here to Malaba. He was working with the um, immigration, immigration department. Then uh, Jennifer, my wife, had now to be transferred to Raegal's uh, secondary school because uh, she had no one to stay with. Those days Pangani was a day school. Was a day school okay. It wasn't a boarding school. So while she was at Rai, she became the chair of the Christian Union and I was the chair of the Christian Union in Sawagongo High School. So our association continued. We would meet in Christian Union rallies, we would meet in Trinity Fellowship conventions during holidays, and she was also uh, the chair of her uh, Kenya Anglican Youth Organization at Lunda Parish. So we would also meet at Kayo meetings, and uh, so eventually, when time was ready for me uh, to get married, uh, I approached her and uh, we dated for two years we, before we got married. By then I had known her for several years. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, even as Bishop Techwater. Mm. Uh, this work is well done by Makogwell Production. <laughs> and therefore, you need to know that if you have a wedding, if you have any event, live streaming, church live streaming, they always do this. And uh, they have sponsored this to ensure that our bishop give his life story and I'm very sure that you are learning something that even in marriage they start with a relationship and uh, they were meeting in school they were just meeting in Mambotuza church uh, Mambotuza church they are going for mission work uh, mm. so Baba Skofu you know the young people are following me and I know they are <laughs> inboxing me right now okay. that uh, during that time we did not have did you have any feeling uh, emotional feeling towards Mama Jennifer? Not that I was aware of, mm. but I had uh, intellectual mm. <laughs> feelings like mm. this is a bright lady, mm -hmm. this is a confident woman, mm -hmm. this is somebody who is good to be around. Those feelings begin because that is how friendship, mm -hmm. friendship begins. You see value mm -hmm. in somebody mm -hmm. and you want to relate with that value. And uh, it grows and it's not necessarily romantic because for us uh, uh, romantic feelings were like very evil. Okay. If you felt any <laughs> romance towards you would need to repent. Woman, <laughs> you would need to, to repent. And uh, then even beginning to feel like I had feelings for her, mm -hmm. it really didn't come from me. A friend challenged me because he knew I was looking for a marriage partner and I had gone to various other places. Then one day he just challenged me, the late Shadrach Jackie Mowur, and said, why are you going so far and you have somebody <laughs> near you? I said, oh, oh yeah, yeah. this is my sister. I've mm -hmm. never thought of her. Sister in Christ. As a, yeah, I've never thought of her as, uh, yeah. a, as a wife. Mm -hmm. But of course, because you've said it, let me pray over it. And as I prayed, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of good qualities mm -hmm. that I would have liked mm -hmm. in my children. You know, when you want to marry, you are thinking of the kind of children you will have, who will nurture them, what kind of values will they have. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, you look for a lady who you desire to share children for you and bring them up in a particular way. And of course, I realized I had a lot of love for her. And uh, then I started the process of proposing and eventually uh, courting Courting. for two years and then getting married in church. Thank you. Before I go to that part of courting, because I need to ask that, <laughs> uh, when I read this book, I realized that uh, your mom also one day met her and uh, uh, proposed that she want to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> that was really unique even for us, mm -hmm. because at that time she was in Form 1, I was in Form 2, mm -hmm. and uh, she came home with her brother and her younger sister, mm -hmm. and I think Mama observed what was happening, because when we were given food, 
she took charge. She would uh, take the plates back to the kitchen mm -hmm. and even offered to wash the, wash plates, the plates in okay. the kitchen. Okay. And Mama just looked at her conduct mm -hmm. and I think in her heart she said oh, this could be, <laughs> <laughs> could be my daughter-in-law. <laughs> but she didn't tell us. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. just addressed my brother-in-law mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. said, Mm -hmm. uh, Naboth, I want to marry this your sister. Mm -hmm. Naboth also <laughs> just said, oh, Mama, you want to marry her? Uh, uh, I agree. <laughs> and all that. But that matter ended. ended there. And later on, when now I told my mom, mm -hmm. she said, I knew these things from day one, I saw her. Okay. So that was love on first on sight for side, my yeah. mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not, <laughs> <you>. <laughs> Not yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's also good to respect the opinion of older people. Mm -hmm. and their feelings. My mother did not force me to, to even uh, propose to her or marry her, mm -hmm. but uh, the moment now I started feeling love for her mm -hmm. to propose, I knew mm -hmm. my mother would be a hundred percent happy with her. Mm -hmm. So that was quite an encouragement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now you are in courting, and mm -hmm. before we go to courting, mm -hmm. uh, we are also glad that uh, we have been hosted here at, uh, how do we call it, Babaskofu? SEK Guest House, Nairobi. SEK Guest House, Nairobi, which mm. is within the community. Yes. How do we call this area? This is community area. It's on Bishop's Road. On Bishop's Road. Bishop's Road. Okay. Uh, in community area. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bishop, I see a young man now asking, <laughs> how did you court? You say you caught for two years. Yes, what we did. did. Yeah. Um, because already I was a priest at that time mm -hmm. uh, in Rai Parish, mm -hmm. I had to, in the language of revival movement, walk in the light. Walk in the light. I told the elders there was a girl I'm interested in, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, any time we had a meeting, mm -hmm. elders and the uh, ladies, older ladies, mm -hmm. would be around to know what we are doing and where we are. Yeah. Uh, so we would meet mostly to go for mission work mm -hmm. and then hold um, our session in uh, a person's house, mm -hmm. particularly the walk in the light, walk let people Latino. know, today I'm going to meet my girlfriend, we will, we will be in Uhuru Park, and we would talk in Uhuru Park, let yeah. people know, mm -hmm. we would also friends mm -hmm. who are in around mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you are walking the the young people tell us that um, <laughs> it's not right <laughs> it's not right to buy a car without a uh, road test <laughs> so we do, do not go for road test <laughs> no, you won't do it. No, no. Uh, marriage is a life where you don't experiment Amen. because when you try to experiment mm -hmm. You send wrong wrong messages to even your girl, and you know there is a different a difference between boys and girls or men and women. Mm -hmm. You know, for us, our sexuality is external. Mm -hmm. The genitalia of a man, of a man are yeah. external. external. And uh, you are more of a giver, you are not a receiver, mm -hmm. the way we are created. Mm -hmm. So for you you can give to as many people mm -hmm. and you don't even feel it in your heart mm -hmm. but for a woman who is a receiver mm -hmm. when she receives from a person mm -hmm. that person becomes part of her life mm -hmm. and uh, so for a woman it's very dangerous if you are giving yourself mm -hmm. to different men mm -hmm. because if uh, they disappoint you then the heart is so deep for boys, you can just say, I was just testing, mm -hmm. I was just mm -hmm. And uh, emotionally, you are not so much invested. And uh, so I would discourage anybody <laughs> trying to experiment <laughs> with, uh, with a woman before marriage. And you know, according to our culture, the laws, you are not allowed to sleep with the woman you are going to marry. You could sleep with somebody else <laughs> to prove you are a man or something, mm -hmm. but not the woman you would marry. And so when we got saved and came to the church, then we said, mm -hmm. 
sleeping around because really uh, God created you and you are okay uh, when the right time comes uh, nobody would teach you how to even love your wife you definitely do that because of the way we are wired and created by God mm -hmm. really encourage young people not to experiment yeah Thank you, Babasco. And you, after this, we, we will have a prayer of deliverance for some of us. <laughs> some of us we mess, uh, yeah. and uh, by the grace of God, uh, it is, the one yeah, it is by the grace of God. I believe there is restoration even yes. for those who have missed. Oh yes, oh yes. When I do premarital counseling, I check with the young people mm -hmm. whether they had had sex with other people. Mm -hmm. So we do deliverance so that mm -hmm. those experiences mm -hmm. do not come. Press them, press them in this marriage, mm -hmm. or even if they had had sex with each other, mm -hmm. we bring a break to that mm -hmm. because that was sex in rebellion against God and because against the teaching uh, of the scripture. Mm -hmm. And once the prayer of deliverance is done, there is restoration, mm -hmm. they begin afresh. And uh, God is a God of second chances, Amen. and uh, and I love Him for that. <laughs> Amen. God is a God of another chance, yes. and therefore we are not here to condemn you. Yeah. You are not there to sit and look down upon your life and yeah. feel like, oh, I've mess in my life. No. I cannot rectify it. Yeah. God can give you another chance. Yeah. That's why the bishop have been preaching for many years. Yeah. And therefore, bishop, as you finish, I want you just to tell us. Um, do you celebrate Mama Jennifer? Mm. Do you celebrate your family? And uh, your last word to our listeners yeah. who are looking forward mm. to hear from you. Yes. Uh, actually, as I told you, we developed friendship because of the values I was seeing in her character. Mm -hmm. She's my best confidant. She's my best support. She's my best counselor mm -hmm. and uh, mother to my wonderful children mm -hmm. and her capacity to love is so big mm -hmm. that uh, in our family we brought up so many children mm -hmm. of course in the nucleus family we say we have four children mm -hmm. but we've brought up so many other children orphans vulnerable children mm -hmm. and even relatives and it's because of her city mm. to be able to love mm. and uh, she's a wonderful homemaker mm. and uh, mama is also a wonderful professional mm. having been a high school teacher mm. and then going to do masters in uh, counseling psychology mm. she's a counselor so we really celebrate her I I believe one of the reasons for my success mm -hmm. was her support, moral, okay. physical, emotional, mm -hmm. and even um, a counseling support. Mm -hmm. uh, Mama Jennifer also has her own ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, I met her when she was already a preacher, mm -hmm. a leader of Christian people, and uh, she has not lost that ministry. Even to date, she can be called to preach. Although after she got surgery and got vocal cords collapsed, uh, she still preaches but now not often because of that challenge. So we really celebrate Mama and uh, she's given me wonderful children and brought up so many other people. I go to any town in Kenya and I have a son or a daughter. I even go overseas to the U.S. Almost every city I go to, I have a son or a daughter who are brought up by mama uh, at our home. So we, we really celebrate our life together. And just to let you know, uh, in uh, April next year, we will celebrate our 40th anniversary. 40th. The 40th <laughs> anniversary. Amen. This year in April. Mm -hmm. Oh, April... Uh, April tw uh, 21st, mm -hmm. uh, we will be uh, 39, 39 years, years uh, wow. old in Mare. And next year will be 40th. I believe you will bring our friends. We will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The video of the, <laughs> of the, celebration. the celebration. Yeah. So yeah. thank you. We really celebrate Mama Jennifer. Amen. And your daughters and your yeah. sons. 
Grand Rapids, Michigan, and uh, Linda is in California, Los Angeles. They are wonderful people, and I have mm. uh, at home, and many others, including Evans at home, and uh, uh, Susan, Cass, mm. and many others and many, uh, who are not uh, biological children, mm. but people we are not. Amen. Thank you, our Lord Bishop, for your opportunity to give us your life story and uh, guys I hope we have learned one thing that marriage works mm. uh, we have learned that no matter the struggle you are going through you should never give up and that's the bishop have spoken to us mm. uh, we are not ending here we are just ending in this episode mm. so that we go to another one whereby we will learn about his call his ministry mm. and many challenges and uh, good things that he have which I know most of us we are waiting, especially those in ministry. Mm. I know we need to know from this man mm. of God. Mm. I know there's a conference we were told he's not um, a mighty man, mm. but he's a man of a mighty God. Yeah. <laughs> and therefore, we want to learn more about from this man of a mighty God, yeah. his experience and his life. I'm really looking forward to meet you. Thank you for those who have been with us. Thank you for the subscribers. Thank you for those who have been sending their comments. And we thank you till we meet again in the next episode.